Good evening, everyone. So tonight is February 25th, 2020, and this is the final budget workshop. I'm sure everybody up here is very upset about that. This will be our last one. Um, so tonight, we will first we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Exactly. All right, so Carl will be presenting for tonight we have, what do we have, water pollution, park and rec, harbor commission, shellfish, human, nope, uh, general government administration, other uh, general government, uh, debt redemption, capital expenditure, and lastly, the revenue. So, Carl? All right, uh, straight in on water pollution control. Uh, there's a smaller decrease in this budget compared to the year prior. Uh, so, uh, as, as we've gone over in prior evenings, the largest line item here is a salary position. This is for a water pollution control clerk. The position is currently vacant. So what is assumed is the entry level first step position for uh, this unionized spot. Next up at $10,000 is professional services. This is for the use of outside consulting engineer that provides uh, support to the WPCC. The next three line items, uh, surface water testing, well, well monitoring and state uh, water testing. Those three are really just lab expenses for sending off samples to be evaluated. Uh, and come back to the come back to town. General supplies is what it is. It's an office supply line item to support the commission, as you've heard in prior evenings. Uh, dues and fees. Uh, there's a slight reduction compared to what was requested to what's being proposed. This would be professional associations for uh, water pollution control authorities. As you can see, prior years the expenditure uh, has been. Uh, a little shaky, but not at the thousand dollar amount, so comfortable with the 900. And last but not least, is uh, seven thousand dollars for the pump out, uh, the pump out boat. Uh, so that's that's WPCC. Uh, there's no questions. Next takes us to Park and Rec. Uh, I'm sorry, I was just waiting to see if So the, um, uh, the clerk is removed? No, the clerk is not removed. The clerk is there. You'll see the town manager recommended carries the salary of $26,926. Oh, it's I'm a sorry. reduction from the year prior based on the fact that the position is currently vacant. Uh, so the salary assumption is entry level first step in the clerk. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was looking along the bottom line. It wasn't carried over, so that's all. It all ends up. Okay. Any other questions? <coughs> Take us to Park and Rec. So again, uh, you've got uh, the personnel expense being the largest cost center uh, for the department. Full-time salary, part-time salary, and then overtime expense. Uh, so you'll note there's a difference between the full-time expense as proposed by the department to what's being presented to you. Um, there was a request at the departmental level to uh, increase a part-timer into a full-timer. Uh, so if you look down at the bottom, you've got a program coordinator <coughs> slash clerk is the last full-time position. Uh, was requested at 31.4. That's been struck uh, under the manager's budget, keeping the part timer uh, position down below. Uh, so there isn't a, there isn't a change in headcount for uh, for park and rec under this proposed budget. Um, that takes us down to repairs and maintenance. Uh, so this is to stay on top of the amenities that you have at uh, Park and Rec. There's a reduction from what was requested to what's been proposed. Uh, based on pulling a few things out of uh, this line item, there's some confusion over copier expense, which is rolled up in the IT budget that we went over already, so that was a reduction. Uh, and then looking at the historical spend rate, I think there's some critical pieces of equipment that the department wants to get to to address in your parks. 
Um, so I didn't feel comfortable hitting it and what they taking it back down to uh, lower, much lower levels. Moving on, our smaller line items, um, and you've got uh, funding for the Clinton Day event down at the bottom at three thousand. Uh, dues and fees is participation in <coughs> Park and Rec professional development opportunities for uh, departmental staff, uh, and again, office supplies and the like. Questions about Park and Rec. Next up is the Harbor Can Commission. I ask, uh, about the <coughs> maintenance of the maintenance has moved over to Public Works. Is that what you indicated? Previously, I noted for you that there was a part-time custodian. So if you look down at the bottom of the screen or the bottom of your page, it says custodian moved to DPW. There was 15,000 under the year prior. Uh, that's now in the loss sum of budget, which we went over the other night. So this shows the deduct where when we went over the WASAM budget, that showed the increase. Okay. I, I just know the commission, Park and Rec Commission, was very keen on keeping that uh, person underneath them so that they had better coordination, especially late in the evenings, etc., when they're coordinating with the director and all the uh, sports teams as well. Was there a major reason that it was moved? So some sort of system processes or rationale there? We're rolling all the custodians into one budget rather than dispersing them all over the place. So it's keeping the costs under together. My understanding though, it wasn't necessarily just a custodian though. This person was also maintenance as well for public work or for park and rec? budget for the position is budgeted in West and it doesn't make any difference if you want to move it back to Park and Rec you can make a motion to move it back to Park and Rec. It's just trying to keep all the custodians in one cost center. Yeah, no, absolutely. It makes I, no difference. That makes sense as well, but I just want to make sure that the department is able to function, especially in the evenings, and have the custodian slash person available to them when they need them. I, you know, I'm just putting out there, raising I, the I don't questions. believe we're changing the reporting relationship. It's okay. just a matter of keeping all the positions in one question. Right. No, that, that makes sense if you're not changing reporting. Thank you. Uh, next would be Harbor Commission. Um, this budget is singularly focused on salaries. Um, so you've got full-time and part-time. Uh, the cost driver here is changes in the state's minimum wage requirements. Um, there's additional hours down there, so there's more opportunity to capture additional revenue to the town. Um, so there's the, your, your cost center here is a function of increase in the minimum wage requirements. If there are any questions on the Harbor Commission, Shellfish Commission. Uh, so shellfish, there's a number of items that they want to spend money on. That actually is only reflected in a singular line item in your budget, but um, they, they have it broken out into a number of different areas. So there is a travel expense to take samples to uh, state labs, uh, either in Rocky Hill or Orange, uh, to the Department of Public Health. So they're, they're traveling to one or the other, and I guess they don't know which one they're going to until the day they're delivering the sample. Um, there's fuel here, there's flyers uh, for public education. Um, there's some uh, personal protective equipment that's envisioned here. Visibility for enforcement opportunities. The biggest increase in what the request was uh, was to buy their own storage trailer. Um, that's the that's the difference between their request and my proposal to you is removing a storage trailer that was thirty six hundred dollars. Uh, the rest of the core operations of the, of the shellfish is, is still preserved within the budget. Um, the boat currently, um, where does it stand with the relationship of the boat? Who's maintaining the boat and who has use of the boat since it's not going to be in this budget? Has there, is there an agreement? How are we moving forward? 
what's not in the budget is a trailer, just for supplies. Yes, no, there's also the boat that the Shellfish Commission uses, and it's also used by many other departments um, within the town. And there was discussion about who should be maintaining it, how an agreement could be in place for the use of the boat. Um, so I'm just wondering whether it's reflected in Shellfish's budget at all, um, and or what discussions have taken place of how to continue to maintain the boat. There's no discussion in their budget of how the boat is to be maintained. Yeah, the, the hundred dollars for, for gas is when we can't get the BBW to put gas in kind of off hour situation, but that is a discussion that has to be had still. But so far there hasn't been an issue this winter in us being able to take the samples every month and when it rains and that sort of thing. So we're gonna be continuing to work that out with the BBW. And maintenance is still Yeah, maintenance is still take care of it. That hasn't changed. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so then next up is general government administration. Uh, so there's a variety of things in here which are more external uh, relationships. Uh, at the top are a series of requests that came in for additional funding from outside entities. And more have continued to come in. Uh, so what you have under the request is what had come in from different outside organizations as of the time the budget was prepared. Um, since then, Shoreline Food Pantry has submitted a letter, um, and Community Renewal Team also submitted a letter. You have not funded this in the past, um, so this budget continues the, the process that you've done previously of not funding those requests. Uh, the next is for Middlesex paramedic to or paramedic intercept. Um, the cost is going to remain the same. Um, so we have confirmation out of Middlesex that the, the cost will be remain unchanged going to another year. Uh, there will be an agreement to memorialize that uh, coming shortly out of Middlesex. Hazardous waste site is the cost for hazardous uh, household hazardous waste collection. Um, Funding is really to reflect kind of what the trend line has been in the past at 25,000. Uh, conference of uh, Municipal is the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, uh, CCM, which is the primary lobbying advocacy group for local governments. Um, dues are maintained uh, at a 0% increase from them, uh, so that's, that reflects a flat line. Estuary transit reflects the cost that they passed through to the member towns, uh, so that reflects uh, Clinton's expense. Estuary Council for Seniors, again, is another outside entity here. Um, I guess I'm looking at what the actual request for funding was versus your practice. Um, so it seems as if for a number of years you have overpaid from what the estuary group has asked for, uh, and the balance of it was uh, an additional donation. Uh, so what's in this budget is the dollar amount that was requested uh, out of estuary, which is 48187. Uh, C-R-E-R-P-A -E -E is the COG, uh, so that's their regular <coughs> dues pass forward. Cost is the Council of Small Towns, which is a lobbying advocacy group dedicated to small, towards small towns, uh, while small in dues. Um, I did strike it out of the budget uh, in terms of cost benefit. There's more value that comes out of CCM than that comes out of cost. Uh, I've dealt with Betsy Guerra, who leads it on a regular basis up in Hartford, but it's just a matter of in terms of bang for your buck. CCM is the better bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. uh, contingency is the next line item. Um, it has a higher level than what you've mm -hmm. had in the past uh, because we're trying to make sure that you've got funding in here that accounts for salary settlements given the fact that every single collective bargaining agreement while just settled is now back up again. Um, so this is trying to at least have some funding available should there be salary settlements that take place if union contracts are settled during the term of this uh, fiscal year. Uh, next is Conservation Commission. Um, expenditure is proposed at 1500 which falls in line with where their historical expenditure rate has been. Uh, judgments is a water a water service that we've provided for a number of years. 
Tree committee is a minor ask at $400. Tree warden is a contractual relationship at $2,500. Historic district commission is a new addition this year. They asked for a number of expenses to be picked up by the town. Um, I think some of it was picked up in other line items last year. Uh, so this year they get they are called out as having their own particular line item um, to to carry forward with. There's nothing here. The next up is general government. Officer. Carl, can I ask a quick question on the, um, the last page? CCM membership. Um, the estuary council of seniors, how are those numbers determined? How, how, is there a formula that we should be aware of? Per capita. It's just simply as straightforward as that. So they have a, a, a dollar amount that they charge per capita. That's, that's usually the, the driver behind most of these expenses. Population stays stable. And it's their budget. Okay, uh, other... General government other. Um, so there's, there's a lot in here to unpack. Uh, this is primary cost center for employee benefits, um, but there's a bunch of other expenses in here which kind of make it a, a, a mixture of, uh, of costs. Uh, so first up is other employee benefits. There's a special um, additional benefit that's provided to a handful of employees. Uh, you can see that the historical spend rate has been a little over 500, so um, this provides a funding level that falls in line with that. So that reflects a reduction from the year prior uh, going into this particular year. Employer Social Security contribution, that's a function of your of payroll for employees. The state, uh, state retiree contribution, this is for MERS. Um, so we have a further refinement of the MERS number, uh, where I would suggest that you reduce the, uh, the MERS line item from 550 and take an additional 24,180 from that line item. And that will fulfill our <coughs> MERS obligation. So I assume you're gonna wanna do that and we'll roll that up into the motion uh, that goes before you uh, on the third. Uh, next up is uh, the police pension. This is an actuarially, actuarially calculated dollar amount uh, to fulfill the funding requirements for the um, police pension plan. Next up is workers' comp. Uh, uh, Kerma is our workers' comp carrier. Uh, so we've got better refined numbers uh, going into the manager's recommended budget from the proposed uh, to reflect the trend for where workers' comp renewal is headed. Next up is uh, health insurance. So this is the employee collective bargaining uh, health care plan. So there's a state of flux here and again another recommended cut that I would encourage you to, to be taking when you meet on the third. Uh, so previously the town purchased its health care through a cooperative uh, representing a number of boards of education. Clinton was the only municipality in it. The Board of Education withdrew from that organization and that's delivered some of their budgetary savings in, in the few recent years. Clinton uh, withdrew from that organization per its uh, bylaws earlier in the fiscal year. So this budget has to implement placing coverage with a different carrier entity uh, going into uh, 7 1 2020. The assumption here is that we'll be shifting over to the state partnership plan or the state employee plan, uh, which provides a reduced premium compared to where uh, what we were getting out of this co op organization. Um, so you'll see, you'll see a reduction. The number assumes that non bargaining unit employees, clerical employees, public works employees, uh, dispatch and supervisors union, those five groups go into the state partnership plan. It does not assume that 
police employees go into that. Police employees are in a different um, plan design. They're in a high deductible, which is not part of the state partnership plan. To put them into the state partnership plan requires negotiations uh, to get them there. Otherwise, we have to shop putting them into a separate high deductible plan. Um, so this is assumed that they're staying in a high deductible plan based on renewal indications we were getting out of the co-op. Um, just because at this point, I have no indication contrary that they're going to shift to a different type of plan. The impact has to be negotiated. Um, so that number, the number you have in the budget there assumes what we were getting out of the state comptroller's office for their prior relationship with uh, Oxford Healthcare as the primary driver for the state employee plan. They have now moved over to Anthem. Anthem's renewal is less aggressive than what Oxford's was. So there's an opportunity to reduce that line item. So the 2,070,000 can be reduced by $47,077. And I'll give that to you as an adjustment for the third. Uh, next up is a pension plan for the fire department. Uh, again, actually derived number to uh, provide additional funding for investments and meeting, meeting the cash flow of paying benefits. Salaries for secretaries for the boards and commissions uh, follows the funding that was provided in the year prior. Uh, the number fluctuates based on the number of meetings and how long the meeting goes. Uh, unemployment compensation depends on staff changes. Um, so this does not assume significant staff changes which would trigger an out of the ordinary unemployment compensation liability. Uh, travel expense is taken out and as we've discussed over a number of meetings it's now distributed back out to the individual budgets. Uh, next up is part of the legal framework. There's three legal line items. Uh, first up is legal services. This would be uh, land use legal and other work that's done outside of the retainer by the town attorney. So it would be more specialized work. Uh, got an update today from Land Use Council which suggested that their number could be reduced based on what they're seeing for litigation and what they're tracking as a litigation budget for things that are open and ongoing. So there's another 10,000 that you could use to reduce the legal services line, uh, taking the 90 to 80. Town Council is the retainer for John Bennett, um, and that's we're going with a number that's known, even though it's out for bid at present. Uh, next up is audit and accounting services. This pays for your annual audit. Um, so that's at the number that we have an indication from the vendor on. Uh, next up is union negotiators. This pays for labor council. Um, I've taken the number down rather significantly um, from 50,000 in the current fiscal year down to 20,000 um, because I've done negotiations uh, many times on my own without the benefit of uh, Labor Council. So there's a dollar amount there for a tail uh, for him to continue to be involved with cases that are still ongoing and to be available on an on-call basis should we have um, something that crops up uh, so that we've got, got him available. Uh, land records index audit. This is part of evaluating our, our, our land records. It's really kind of a town clerk expense. Um, probably should be in that budget rather than this one. Uh, insurance other than employee benefits. So this would be uh, property, liability, auto, um, any bonds that are taken out for employees. Uh, so this is sort of catching all of the other general risk management policies. Uh, there's a, a change there based on some indications coming out for where our coverages w might be going in the, in the next year. Advertising is a catch-all bucket for all legal advertising. In a report as production of the, the printed document, um, I've assumed that maybe we could reduce the print run so that we're not stuck with some um, afterwards and making this more of a, a, a digital document uh, rather than overprinting books that, that ultimately find their way in the, in the waste stream. Uh, electricity is a catch-all account for all electrical utilization, all electricity utilized by the town. Um, so this assumes a small increase over the year prior, 
Uh, I'm going through the process now to shop electricity as a commodity uh, to see what, whether we can pull that down. Um, you're still paying transmission from on Eversource's lines, but you would shop the slice of the bill that is uh, the, st the standard offer that comes from Eversource and what they're doing from a procurement standpoint. Um, so I don't have an indication now until we go through the procurement process and see what, uh, what the pricing comes in at. Uh, heat and water is, again, another utility expense uh, for gas and, and water. Uh, copy equipment supplies, this is uh, a diminished line item. It's been reduced because all of the copier expense was rolled up into IT. There's a small tail that's left here for any sort of uh, miscellaneous equipment that needs to be picked up. Bank fees is part of what we pay to the privilege of keeping a bank account for the town's uh, funds to be used as, as payment. Um, investment income is not such to offset the cost of the uh, account, so you've got uh, bank fees that need to be paid. Miscellaneous expenditures is a catch-all. There's a variety of smaller expenses that go into that. There's some specialized parking arrangements that the town has had for a number of years for special events, uh, which is born in that particular line item. Board of Assessment Appeals uh, is a commission expense at 300. Um, special events uh, is what it is. What it says it is, it's a special events that the town supports with a small amount of funding. Uh, Pearson costs are new uh, in this budget, so this is the cost center where we're trying to capture um, what we're seeing for the carrying costs for Pearson. So the request is based on the Pearson Study Committee's work product. Uh, the managers recommended is based on a refinement of where we're seeing some of the numbers coming in at. Um, there's a fundamental assumption that the building isn't going to be actively utilized during the carrying period. Uh, park and Rec is in there at present. Um, we don't have the means to subdivide and control access to different points in the building. Um, so we're trying to maintain keeping it going, but not uh, making a free-for-all where it becomes harder to uh, manage the building uh, with people having access to wider and wider sizes of the, of the structure. Uh, if there's no questions on that. I had sent an email with a question on CCM and or continuing education for boards and commissions. Um, in the past, it wasn't really delineated very well in any of the department budgets. Uh, people on the Planning and Zoning Commission did utilize courses that they could take, and especially for new commissioners coming on, um, the land use um, training. And it came out of the that land use budget. Um, it's already sort of been a mishmash over the years. Has there been a decision as to how you want to continue to um, allow for training for commissioners, and or whether or not that is going to continue? Uh, so, as you will recall from the evenings prior up until this point, there are different line items for dues and uh, fees, which pays for professional associations and training opportunities, so that's buried in individual departmental budgets, which was the practice last year. There's no change in that practice. There's a budget. The budget needs to be managed. Um, with bidding out town attorney, there's an opportunity through that vetting process, which ultimately you guys will appoint, um, to determine having that individual firm, whatnot, coming in providing pro bono training. A number of them offer that, particularly to land use boards. It's a good risk management behavior, and at any rate, that would not be sending uh, commissioners out. That would be keeping them here and interacting with uh, the, the chosen entity that you guys ultimately <coughs> um, So that's a, a new way to expand training by bringing in uh, the attorney to give guidance and direction before you need the attorney to be involved and avoiding future attorney expenses. Um, so I would be looking to that as a source of additional training to uh, particularly the land use boards. There may be trainings that would be beneficial uh, to, the, to this group uh, also depending on what you're reviewing. Uh, 
next is debt. I'm not sure how, how much you want to dive into debt. Um, the bonds have been issued. They have an amortization schedule. The amortization schedule is reflected here. Um, so this is the combined page uh, that has principal for Board of Ed and Town, interest for Board of Ed and Town broken out by the bonds that have been issued to date uh, for what's already been authorized. You've got some fluctuations still because you're still floating with bond anticipation notes for the high school and that all has not been converted over to a full, a full regular bond. Uh, so as I noted for you at the last bond sale, the bands are at about 1% and the bonds are at about 2%. So you've got some, some fluctuation that takes place until you roll it all up into permanent financing. Under the principal area is lease town. Uh, so technically th these uh, capital leases that we've done, which are these purchases, uh, is viewed as debt. Um, so your carrying costs in there are for already assumed leases. Uh, you've got, you've been leasing police vehicles, so there's the capital expense that appears in the capital line item, which is kind of year one, and then the subsequent out years are all reflected in this budget under the lease payments. <coughs> so you've got the police vehicles, there's a public works uh, item uh, equipment also in the, in the lease purchase uh, line. Uh, so this assumes, and again, is reflected in capital when we get to it, the continuing practice of leasing uh, police vehicles, or lease purchase of police vehicles. understand those changes that take place between capital and then our debt, particularly with the leasing of vehicles, etc. We ran into it last year where there seemed to be a um, disconnect on how a, something that was under capital then impacted budgets later on in the year. And I just want to bring it to everybody's attention so that um, when it does come up, everybody does understand the consequences later on that there's an impact to those areas. And, and, and as was pointed out in the budget message in the original budget presentation, debt service continues to grow um, because things have been financed. The school is a normal project that you would finance through bonding. Um, paving has been part of your, your bond package in the past, which is a little bit out of best practice. Uh, you've also been bonding for major bridge projects, so there's been an awful lot of infrastructure of late that's been bonded. And it's not just sort of the year-to-year -year expense. These things grow over time. And it's really more watching that amortization curve grow and looking for when it, when it peaks out for how you can then start dovetailing in new, new and additional bonding uh, instead of just keep laddering it on top of one on top of the uh, next because you never peak that curve. Next pages were just the detail of individual bond issues. Uh, so this can be tough to read. Um, this is capital. We have uh, the handouts we can give you that shows you the page that's in your budget, which is projected on the screen, which is the departmental request that the manager uh, proposed. What's going around now includes the column of what came out of the CEC process. So you can see departmental request, CEC recommendation to the manager, and then the manager's proposal to uh, the town council. So working through this exhibit, uh, first up is the fire department cost center. Uh, they requested four million dollars for uh, addition and renovation to the headquarters. CEC was pushing this into a bonded project bucket, which likely is where it should be. It just isn't necessarily going to be something that we're going to go out and bond right now. Uh, as you know, and has been reported at prior town council meetings, there's a review process to figure out scope and develop what that budget is going to be. Uh, so it is an immediate expense. 
think it's being raised for your awareness. Uh, in terms of reality, it's probably two years out before this is a, a bigger a bigger thing to concern that would be a capital and ultimately debt service expense. Um, the other items, there's uh, an opportunity to amend the budget here, which I will give you as a motion for the third. Um, so for the fire department, it would be restoring personal protective equipment, which is an add of 27,000, reducing paint or eliminating painting, which is a deduct of 30,000. That gives you a net deduct out of the fire department of $3,000. Um, so then that leaves after that is a firefighter rope escape system, which was a request from the department, uh, passed through from CEC and, and coming through out of the manager's side of it. The funding that was per asked for for to replace the tanker at half a million dollars, uh, there was a lengthy conversation at, about this at CEC, so you'll notice that CEC didn't fund it. Um, I'm picking up in my budget the funding mechanism that was discussed at CEC, which is a long-term fire apparatus uh, replacement reserve. This is an attempt to smooth out what future expenses are going to be for the fire department. Um, as you can see from the half million dollar request for the tanker, these are not uh, inexpensive vehicles. Um, so it's high six figures pushing seven figures, depending on what we're talking about. Uh, so the idea of the reserve is to provide a consistent level of funding. Um, so that that level of funding dovetails with when vehicle replacements come up on the vehicle replacement schedule. So you have dollars in place to move on the vehicle rather than what I would really describe as significant shocks to the capital system of having to fund a $1.2 million fire apparatus and then not fund something for a few years and then fund something at seven hundred, eight hundred thousand. So those kind of, that whipsawing is trying to eliminate that as, as a feature of what your capital budget system is. Um, so this would become a consistent funding piece going forward into the future to make sure you have dollars positioned when equipment is reached the end of its service life and is either going to be replaced or rechassed. Carl, could you repeat what you said about the um, personal protection gear line? Uh, personal protective equipment. So this is the, the turnout gear. Um, so this is uh, re removed in error and should be added back in and then the painting should come out. Oh, okay. All right. So between those two line items, it's a net deduct of $3,000. Thank you. So we're taking out painting and putting it in gear. Correct. Is the painting being handled by under the budget of the <coughs> works or is it just being next this year? It's being next this year. <laughs> Uh, so next takes us to the police department. The police department at the departmental request level was providing funding to lease purchase vehicles. Uh, radar signs, two types of radar signs. Uh, there's one currently deployed in town. It seems to be very popular. People want to see uh, more deployed in town as an encouragement for slower speeds. Uh, so there are two signs included in here in the $10,000 request. And then um, some weaponry line item to provide for patrol rifles. Apparently only some vehicles have a rifle ability to respond, and this provides funding to round out um, those vehicles that don't have the, the same response. So every vehicle can respond the same. Um, so that was the request that was passed through at CEC, and that's being passed through um, in the manager's budget. Uh, and again, as was just mentioned, the fifty thousand dollar capital here is mated over on the debt service side also. So a question on the range improvements. I know that we do get revenue. Is that cycled through? Is there an opportunity to do any of the improvements with that uh, contribution from the other towns that utilize our range? Or is it not an issue right now? It's not a capital item right now. It's not requested for twenty twenty one. So it's, it's not an expense for anything else. Oh, it's just a line that exists, but it's not added to. Okay. Next takes us to uh, land use. Uh, so there was a request here for um, 
an improvement to departmental permitting software, uh, which is the intent is to reduce the number of steps taken by staff, uh, enhance customer <coughs> the customer experience working with the town, uh, make sure that everybody's operating on the same page and understanding where developments are or permits are going through the process. Uh, you would build a bridge over to the assessor's department so the assessor is aware and can capture improvements as they move forward. Uh, the actual product has to be selected. This is a recommendation coming out of our planning consultants as in terms of the dollar amount. Um, there's at least three products to be uh, reviewed and vetted, so there's an RFP process that has to move forward. At the departmental request, there was a $5,000 add-on for uh, departmental technology upgrades. It's really hardware that would mate with the software system, uh, so it's more of a, a scanner at the counter for individuals who come in with paper to scan their application into the system and a terminal for public use. Um, it was taken out at the CEC level um, with a uh, contribution from the IT director suggesting that he could pick up that expense. Uh, and then what got passed through at the manager's level is reaffirming um, what came out of CEC of looking at the investment in software. Timing for the investment in software, uh, I think is the singular issue at this point. Document management has been something that the town funded for a number of years. Document management is not yet up and 100% running within land use, and that project really needs to be done first and closed out, then move on to the next piece of technology uh, in that area. It's envisioned that that would take place sometime during this fiscal year. Uh, public Works, this is a bit to walk through here, um, coming through the CEC process and then how, it, how it's allocated in the budget. Uh, so the departmental request was for a placement chipper, uh, one heavy duty dump truck, a grounds mower, a medium duty uh, plow truck, and then a uh, vehicle for the director, which is really just going to be a, a, a pickup truck that can also be dovetailed into for plowing. What came through in the budget process before CEC met was pricing changing for looking at a vehicle that kind of fits between that heavy duty and medium duty. I don't know what you call it, but whatever. There's, there's a truck that fits in that spot. Um, the cost for those two trucks is less than the cost for the one heavy duty and the one medium duty. So the, these two larger duty trucks meet the needs of the department at a lower price point than what was originally proposed. So if you look at your CEC sheet, you see an addition of two medium trucks with plows at 220. Um, so that's, you're taking out the 190 and you're taking out the 80. So the total of 170 is, is out, 220 is in. So CEC was recommending a reduction for vehicles of 50,000. Um, that's carried across, it's just a matter of where it appears in line. For me, I just populated the uh, heavy duty dump line with, with the 220. Uh, so it's, we're both in agreement that the funding could be provided. It's just you know, what line item it appears on. Um, so at the manager level, I eliminated the chipper, pushing through the two trucks and the grounds mower, uh, as well as the pick up plow, small plow that will be used as the, the department director vehicle and for snow response. Um, what we've got coming out of the public works director at this point in time is if the board were to collapse two projects that are in pre-existing capital now and reappropriate it, that provides the funding stream to purchase the grounds mower. So you could eliminate the grounds mower out of this budget and it can be funded out of two line items from the prior years. Uh, your practice has been that if a, line, a capital line item sits idle for a period of time, it ultimately gets swept. It's the same concept, we're just sweeping it early and you would have to then appropriate, collapse the projects, deauthorize them, and then appropriate uh, the available balances to buy the mower. Um, so that gets the mower done and takes it out of this budget. Oh. Yes. Uh, and that truck line there, you have the 220 that's going to be in the capital. 
Over here on the left column, it says paid cash, $100,000. What, 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 what's that all about? Okay, so if you look at the CEC line, uh, CEC was suggesting that the full 220 uh, be funded out of fund balance. The, the, cat, the line at the column says cash, but it, it's fund balance. Um, so what I was proposing to you in, in this budget, uh, trying to tra track where we were with fund balance, I was putting in 100 uh, for this particular uh, project rather than the full 220. Um, if it was your inclination to follow through with CEC and add on another 120 out of fund balance, you could do that and that would still keep us in position of meeting the minimum okay. that we need for bonding and making so sure that So if I'm following you then, it's you're, we're allocating 220 to purchase the two trucks, but 100 of it will come from cash. 100,000 will come from cash. So in reality, all of that will the only thing remaining in the capital would be 120,000. For public works, it would be. I mean, for that particular line. Correct. So, what you've got, and I pointed out at the beginning of the process, was I'm appropriating fund balance as a revenue for for the town rather than the process of where you've extracted it and done it separately. So everything is is there. So there's fund balance is appropriated on the revenue side. This is the expense. This is part of the expense. Thank you. Uh, public works maintenance. Uh, so there's a nine thousand dollar request for field renovations. Uh, that was at the departmental request. That was approved through CEC and is recommended for you. Um, public works is working with Park and Rec to make sure that the facilities uh, are available to respond to the, the needs of the town. Uh, next up is dealing with um, a generator for the fire department uh, headquarters. Uh, so this is a replacement, trying to stay on top of uh, what we've got for equipment uh, and get it before it goes. So there was a request for 80000 that was approved at CEC. And again, it's recommended for you tonight. Uh, HVAC replacement, again, this is preventative maintenance to stay on top of things before they, they go downhill. Uh, requested at 18,000, CEC recommended at 18,000, and proposed to you at 18,000. Painting the cell block at the police department was requested at 20,000, uh, recommended by CEC. It is not one of the higher priority maintenance items, um, so that's that's why it's not reflected through onto the manager side of it. Um, roads, this would be an addition of starting to work into the, let me scroll down to the next one. Um, 200,000. This is starting a process of putting in the budget an allocation of funds to do paving rather than bonding. Um, so the initial request is for 200,000. That came through out of CEC and is recommended for you. So this would be a change in practice. This would be having a funding provided in the budget on an annual basis for paving rather than bonding. Um, Public Works is going through a process to rate and rank roads to give them uh, grades, which helps prioritize dollars to be spent for paving. Um, it's a more efficient use of your dollars to pay it on a pay-as-you-go basis rather than bonding it. Uh, I understand the mechanics of why it has been bonded in the past, um, but right now it's 2% money. It's still an interest expense that you're bearing. You're still paying more to pave that same road than you would have if you paid cash for it. Um, so this is a more efficient use of your money. Um, that's why it's in here as a recommended change in practice um, and, and providing this as a consistent piece of funding. Uh, Townwide General is responding to a wide cross-section of capital needs. Uh, request was at 55, recommended at C, recommended from CEC at 55, I'm pushing it through at 50. Um, transfer station repairs, uh, these are things that really can't be delayed. This will be uh, funding to keep the transfer station operational um, and keeping that as, a, as an asset for the town. Uh, you are going to be looking at a more significant investment at the transfer station uh, sooner rather than later to keep that operational and addressing the, the waste stream that goes through that building. Um, so this is a, a higher priority expense. So 35,000 requested, CEC recommended, 
and proposed through to you. Um, for this particular building, uh, there's a funding request in here for an interior, additional interior painting. Request was 20, CEC approved 20, I'm recommending 10 uh, to, to stay on top of what we're doing. Uh, a larger, more dire expense is dealing with uh, external, which is the, the clock tower railings and the parapet. Uh, so you've got some, some problems up, up there that need to be addressed to keep the building uh, where it kind of needs to be. Uh, so that's a request at 75, uh, CEC recommended 75, and um, recommended to you at 75. Um, there was a request for a land use remodel. Um, it's not clear what that scope was, is. There was the intention that someone was going to come up with uh, a floor plan to address those needs. Uh, it did not make it through the CEC process. Uh, and at this point is not recommended for further action. If there are needs for electrical upgrades, other things that are core, um, that can be addressed out of the other line items. It doesn't need to have its own remodel line item at this point in time. Um, so it's more of a delayed expense rather than a total elimination. In my understanding, the land use remodel was um, when the electrician reviewed it, it was very difficult to make those adjustments in the office with the staff still in there. And that is how the recommendation came down to do more of a holistic approach to dealing with it, on top of the fact that the staff are kind of tight in there. Um, in future budgets, are is it going to be addressed? Is this a need that the town sees? Um, as well as the fact that the overall perception when you come into that office is it really probably needs a bit of a cleanup. Um, the rest of the town has had a nice new paint job, new desks, things that just look a little better. Yeah, it's something for future consideration. It's not something that's an immediate high priority at this point in time. Um, and I have a question on the, the roads general. Um, with the interim town manager, um, the rank and rating of the roads. Um, there was a contract that was bid out and determined, and I had asked the question how sidewalks are going to be incorporated in that rate and ranking, and he said he would pursue that. Um, we did not hear back from him on that. Uh, I see that in capital there's no budget related to sidewalks. Um, they are in extremely poor condition in town, and as their public works director is very well aware, people do complain about them. Will budget, uh, the road in general road budget incorporate the repairs that need to take place throughout the town for the sidewalks? This line item was envisioned to be uh, road surfaces, not sidewalks. Um, a separate sidewalk placement plan uh, would, would theoretically be another line item or you would have to increase this particular line item to respond to sidewalk maintenance. Sidewalk repair is a function of what the material is, whether it's going to be concrete or asphalt or some, some other material. So it's really kind of what's the design standard going to be for going forward. So that's, it's, it would have to be a separate line item. Um, I'm not sure about the rating and ranking of sidewalks. That's something for further follow-up. Can you um, please follow up on that as well? Yep. Thank you. Uh, water pollution control, uh, so there was, there was a lot here that was uh, asked, uh, 6.2 million. Um, there was a spirited discussion at uh, CEC um, for these particular projects. Uh, it was not recommended for funding at this point in time, uh, and it's not pushed through at the manager level. These are, as you can see from the dollar amounts, these are things that would really be more bonded projects. And getting consensus moving forward. Uh, the Rocky Ledge water main is something that when there was a start of conversations with the Connecticut Water Company. I guess they changed their perspective on capital contribution. Uh, so that's something that needs to be further reviewed to round out where, where we're going on that front. Uh, the facilities plan uh, and continuing to move forward along those lines, those are things that still need further further discussion to round out where you would be spending uh, these hefty subs. So it's not an elimination, it's more of a delay to a further out year while conversations continue. Technology.
Technology is next. Uh, so you've got uh, a number of requests were made, uh, and some of those got flushed through to CEC, and then a smaller subset got flushed through to you as a proposed expenditure. Um, so perhaps easier to speak to the ones that fell by the wayside than the ones that came through. So the bottom one of a software hardware uh, AFIS system at the PD, it was requested 25,000. The state is actually going to be purchasing that for the police department. Uh, so it fell off at CEC and clearly is not pushed through to you for a request. Uh, server replacement at the town hall, 26,000 came through. That is a higher priority. Uh, to be funded. This is part of our relationship with the Board of Education and it, it's a, a, the higher priority need to be addressed within IT. Office 365 implementation replacement is a capital request of 28.8. There was a uh, $5,000 operating expense also in the IT operating budget. It was cut. The 5000 was cut out of the operating budget. We're not going to shift to Office 350, uh, 365 right now. So since the operating expense is out, the capital expense is out, and uh, CEC took it out, so it's not it's not passed through to you uh, tonight. Um, Wi-Fi at Park and Rec is is pushed through. Uh, police car technology enhancements. This is uh, replacing the it used to be laptops in the cruisers, now it's tablets in the cruisers. Uh, so this is carrying through. Uh, as vehicles are replaced, and then sort of the ongoing uh, computer replacement workstations goes in at 22775 20, uh, that was recommended by CEC and pushed through to you. And to some extent, that line item would be responding to the $5,000 uh, that was in land use. Uh, so the logic was take it out of land use, and this particular line item would have to respond to whatever the hardware additions were that would be made into the permitting software system. Questions? Takes us to Park and Rec. Uh, so Park and Rec requested uh, three, three items. One was to, to provide for funding on the Ethel Peters practice field focused on that. Then the next line item was the Peters Pavilion. Um, there's a, a currently a, a fundraising effort to find donations to round out that uh, pavilion project. Uh, there's a quest, request for additional town funds. Uh, we're working through a state grant funds that was also supposed to be part of the funding mix for that particular project. Uh, and then some architectural uh, work to work on the, the bathhouse at the town beach. CEC's approach was to collapse the, the two Peters complex items into one line item and fund it at 45. Um, so instead of having a separate line that's only the pavilion and a separate line that's only the practice field, they were collapsing it together uh, and then funding it just at the, at the 45. And so you'll see that that's what carries across to you for uh, recommendation uh, to be funded out of, out of the, the budget. Uh, next up, our Board of Education. Wait, can I ask something here? Um, traditionally, Park and Rec has asked for $7,000 every year for their track reseal and striping. And they get it redone, I think it's every four years, and it's about $30,000. Or four or five. Right. And, it, and how much does it generally run both? Um, between fifty dollars and $60,000. So, Last year, it was mistakenly left out of CEC, but it was the year that it needed doing. So they had to come before um, Board of Finance and everybody and be allocated. Um, I thought it was thirty-five thousand. There's two thirty-five uh, disbursements. The total is seventy thousand. This year, uh, the project came in a little over fifty-six thousand. Okay, so. So I don't know whether this was an oversight on their part or what, but generally they do make that request every year of the CEC. And to not see that touched on here, I think might have just been an oversight on their part. So um, rather than that once every five years getting the big hit, we might think about 
reestablishing that annual contribution towards that process. Because right now that track has is way over its its life expectancy because they do take really good care of it. So just may I answer may I answer? They did the track this year. Right. Right. And so if you remember several years past, that business of carrying it seven, 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 six or eight times was done and eliminated and said we will wait to go just before the project has to be done. Is that correct, Bo? Yes. And then we would ask just for two thirty-five thousand acquisitions. Because of the problem, Carol, was with all the sevens being carried over under that Board of Finance uh, well, regulation about how you have to get permission to carry something every two years and get permission you have to come to the board of finance or there is no more board of finance but whomever and keep getting permission to roll it over roll it over it was decided eliminate that seven year project of or eight year project of seven thousand dollars a year and just wait till the final two years and ask for 35 and 35 if i'm correct yes that's thank you I'd just be curious, Carl, how would you prefer to see something like that handled? I mean, just put it in like a five-year plan or something? Yeah, I think you need to have, obviously during a budget process, you focus only on the year that's in front of you right now. So mm -hmm. the idea of having a capital plan is that you've got these expenses flagged in, in future right. years. I'm not sure that it's a dollar amount that warrants a reserve fund okay. if you want to do that that's certainly something you could do I think the concept of how I'm trying to put a reserve fund in at least for like the fire department is we're talking about some pretty significant dollar amounts here right. that yeah. are yeah. Uh, could really kind of wreak havoc with where the budget comes and what's the individual situation in that in, in a given year this is a different dollar amount if it's a series of small slugs over five years or two slugs over two years. Um, they're not dollar amounts that I think are going to create a lot of havoc in terms of where capital goes. So it's... Okay. Yeah, so what would be your suggestion to keep it the way it is now, Carl, or whatever? But yeah, I mean, as the 10-year plan gets updated every year, those two payments of 35 will show up. Yeah. How often do you have to do, redo the track? Uh, originally it was five years as the track is older it requires probably four years yeah. so we, we we shoot between four and five years five at the maximum four at the minimum amount. we just did it this year we just so, did it this year correct but those 35s will show up in a 10-year plan yeah yeah so we, we, it's a good point carol it won't be forgotten again no that was just yeah i think it's a matter of the discipline of getting it in the plan showing it in the plan and then when you get to that point of having to fund it, it's what's the funding mechanism, whether it's one hit or two hits, and that's that's really kind of how you could ladder it out in the capital plan is whether it's one or two. That's, that's the whole point of the capital plan is something that you track against. Mm -hmm. The focus is always on the immediate year um, because that's that's these are the real dollars. The other ones are ethereal dollars. Um, that takes us, uh, the last town side capital request was out of human services. This was, uh, there's 16,000 in here for a bus. Um, this dollar amount request reflects what would have been the local match for a grant to acquire a bus. Uh, however, when the request came in, there was no matching dollars for a bus driver nor any matching operating dollars for fuel. Um, the grant and the timing of getting a bus is several years out. Um, there was some question in terms of what the efficacy of the bus was going to be and how it was going to operate. There was no operating plan uh, advanced, so it didn't kind of make it through the CEC process. And since it's more of an aspirational project and something that's ready to go with a real plan around it. Uh, it's not advanced through at the manager's level. The funding source is federal, so the likelihood of it continuing to be in place is there. If you're going to do something like this, take on a transportation program, 
you need to have a real plan behind it and not just uh, not just a, a capital funding request. Um, so there's a lot more work that would have to be done before something like this practically should be entertained. That's it for the town. Um, you've got the dollar amounts for the Board of Ed. I'm not sure I'm the best spokesperson for the Board of Ed's capital projects. I can take a stab at it. Um, I don't want Mary to throw anything at me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, sure. sta I'll start, and I'm sure you'll correct me if I go off the full of script. Um, so on this particular page, the only item uh, up for consideration is uh, roof work at the Elliott School. Um, this is the last roof project. Uh, so what, with what you've got in process right now with Joel and Elliott, and this project, you're done with roofs at the schools for a while now. Um, so this was a higher priority item, passed through at CEC and um, passed through for you as, as a funding project. Uh, next up was uh, classroom, under the system-wide bucket, uh, continuing the, the classroom shade replacement program uh, and some fencing repair to be done at Joel and Elliott. Uh, it was passed through at CEC and recommended for you for action. Uh, computer technology upgrades and replacement is the, is the bigger one at, at over 100,000. Um, that was likewise passed through at CEC to, to you for funding. Um, electric power upgrade. The request coming out of the Board of Education was 30,000 at the CEC level. The Board of Ed corrected the number and bent it down to 20000 as the actual funding need. Uh, so that's reflected at the CEC level and passed through to you um, for your action. Then uh, equipment replacement uh, is for a model? Maintenance, yeah. No, that, the, uh, yes, equipment replacement is the snow removal um, tractor at the high school that also will be um, used by DPW in the summer and the school in the summer for the fields. Um, so that's 20,000 uh, requested and passed through at CEC and at the manager's level. Um, floor covering, uh, dealing with uh, floor coverings at the schools that have reached the end of their service life. Uh, it was in at 30,000, so that was passed through uh, to you for funding. Next up at 125,000 is HVAC replacements. Uh, again, this is part of staying on top of things uh, before they go bad. Uh, so this is this was approved at CEC and carried through across uh, to you. Uh, LCD project um, is another um, rounding out at the Board of Ed at 49, uh, passed through at CEC for your action. And the last item that's through into the budget that you have is $10,000 for maintenance equipment replacement. You'll notice that there's a, a security a communications upgrade at 166,000 that was requested. CEC was fine with funding the project, uh, and they had it in as a as a, a fund balance appropriation. The conversation at CEC was whether it was to come out of fund balance or whether it was going to come out of uh, where the Board of Ed was looking at its trends for if they were going to have excess funding available in their current year in order to provide. Uh, to get that project done. It fell out at the Board of Ed level, so it didn't come through to the town manager's uh, proposal to you. So when the Board of Ed finally ratified its budget, that project is to be funded out of current year funds. Uh, so there is no, no capital expense. So that's why, that's why that project fell out um, going from CEC to the manager's recommended. The Board of Ed took it out at, when they ratified their budget. So last up is revenue. Uh, so this will be another tough one to look at. Um, so probably better off looking at the printout that you were given in your in your books than trying to read it on that screen. A little busy there. Uh, so that would be the revenue tab. I don't have a revenue tab. Uh, 
Не, мы пену не сообщим. In the beginning section. Right. In the after beginning the section message. after the budget message. At the beginning where it has your message, his message? At the very beginning. Before the schedule. Yeah, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've got a variety of sources of funds that support the town budget. Um, the largest, as, as, as was noted uh, during the budget presentation, is the current year tax levy. Um, so the dollar amount that's in here reflects the funds that would have to come in based on the proposed mill rate, based on the proposed funding plan. So when you reduce the expenditures, this line item is going to change to the budget and balance. Uh, prior year tax levy, this is collection of delinquents. Uh, it's proposed at 175000 which is where you were for the assumption for the current fiscal year we're in now. Supplemental motor vehicle is in at three hundred, which is again where you were uh, the year prior. Tax interest and liens, uh, it's in at 120. The tax collector is more comfortable where that number is coming in. Uh, so this is an opportunity to increase the revenue line item by 20,000, taking it up to 140. Um, so I'll add that for the third as a, as a revision that the board will make. The next bucket really gets to the grants and aid uh, for what, what flows out of Hartford and the various and sundry programs. Um, the majority of them are somewhat small, um, so I'll focus on the bigger ones. Uh, Town Aid Road, um, this has been part of the debt diet and the tolls debate, uh, but those dollars are not going to flow. Um, so what you have for uh, this program was proposed in the governor's budget to be level funded from the year prior. Um, it is does come out of bond proceeds, so we only realize it as a revenue when the bond commission releases the monies. Uh, but the state budget number is what's what's approved here. Um, next is BOSIP. Um, this is, uh, again, a, a bond funded, a state bond funded program. Um, it's really an operating expense of the state, but it's it's been funded by bonds for a number of years. Um, you've got uh, the state property grant coming in really their, their payment in the taxes for their state properties. Uh, then really the next largest item gets to municipal stabilization grant and grants for municipal projects. These dollar amounts are funded as in terms of what the governor's budget says. Since the current debate up in uh, the General Assembly is the possibility of putting more money into municipal aid, the governor's budget at this point represents a good floor rather than going in for what the appropriations might, committee may come out at, because that's never been the budget. Um, so the governor's budget is a good, right now at least, is a stable conservative uh, piece. ECS was more of the topic of conversation in prior years, was more of a topic of conversation during, during the budget presentation. That appears a little further down in the budget under the Board of Education. Uh, next line item note out of the Board of Ed is investment income. It's in at 50,000, so we're in a pretty low interest rate environment. There's not a lot of opportunities to make money off of our money. Um, so this line item is reflects the environment we're in. Um, that also flows through on the Wasam Trust Fund interest. Again, it's a, a somewhat small number. Town property rentals, um, there's a strong book of business of utilizing town facilities. So this is a conservative number based on what you can see as this trend for utilization. Uh, same number for Wasam rentals. <laughs> Miscellaneous revenue and receipts, it is, it is as, as stated. So you've had a practice of having a conservative number. Looking at the out years, those are actuals. So the number is going to fluctuate depending on what comes through and is accounted for in that individual line item. 
uh, workers' comp refunds. This would be something coming out of our workers' comp carrier. They had a program to distribute member equity. Uh, that's one way to look at it. The other is that their reserves are too high and they're distributing funds back uh, for premium. So uh, this is in here under the assumption we, we might get some something back. Applied surplus under capital. This dovetails with the capital plan. Uh, so here is the actual appropriation of fund balance to go towards capital items. What's in the manager's budget is 450 being utilized for that purpose. Um, so this reflects the 450. If you go down the road of using more fund balance for capital, this uh, revenue line item would also have to go up to reflect the, the balance that you're striking. Appropriated surplus is an assumption that's been in the budget for any number of years, it's a usual circuit breaker to provide some degree of tax relief. Every municipality assumes a certain level of fund balance being used uh, in this capacity. If you don't need it, it doesn't re get realized as a revenue. So when you look at those out years and you see that there's nothing there, um, you never needed to use it. Uh, so it's there in case you need to use it. Uh, moving along, you get to the town clerk's fees coming in. Uh, real estate conveyance tax is a revenue collection that we do for the state. We collect some of it and keep it here. Another chunk of it gets passed through the state of Connecticut. Uh, and then the vital, vital records uh, that come through as a revenue source. Next up in again, these smaller areas, well, boarding fees at $150. Contracted police services at $25,000. Police fines at 11,000. Um, these are conservative numbers that reflect um, at least what we know we can count on rather than private duty activity for the police department, which fluctuates depending on what construction activity there is, road cuts and the like. Uh, public works, you know, you've got transfer station fees and then whatever the salvage value is of scrap metal that goes into the transfer station. Um, you have a, a program where you provide uh, free transfer station passes to seniors. Um, there's roughly 400 people using the transfer station. Half of those are seniors. Uh, so the other half uh, are, are not seniors reflect here as what they're paying to use the transfer station. Uh, land use fees, this is permitting activity. They're conservative numbers, not knowing what uh, development activity is gonna come through in any given year. Also, not assuming spikes that you then have to pull out in future years. Uh, so you get your planning and zoning fees, ZBA fees, and then the wetland fees for application. Uh, the biggest line item here is really the building permit fees, uh, and that's a, a number that the building official is comfortable with in terms of what's what's in the pipeline for activity going forward into the into the new year. Park and Rec, uh, beach passes, conservative number based on at least you can see some historical trend on that. Uh, launch passes and then uh, the boat mooring income. Um, they're all reflective of what your historical trend line has been. ECS, uh, this was discussed during the budget presentation. You'll see that lower number in what was the budgeted revenue. Um, that's an under budgeting of what the town ultimately received, but a decision made based on the best information at the time since the program was in a state of flux while the budget was working its way through. The number goes up for the recommended budget because that reflects what's actually called for in the state budget. The governor is not cutting it any greater than what was already built into the biennial budget. So again, it's a one-time adjustment up unless the program and the ECS formula changes by legislation. That number will likely go down next year um, and not, not stay at the level that it's at. It's been on a decline for a while now. Uh, funding for ECS overall in the state's budget is higher, but those dollars are going to priority districts, which are school districts with greater challenges than, than Clinton has. Uh, the last line item in this particular bucket for education is the special education reimbursement. Uh, so in your discussion that you had the other night with the Board of Education budget on Special education expenses, there is some state contribution that comes back as a reimbursement for expenses that top a given threshold. 
Um, the number has fluctuated wildly in the past because it's a function of who you have in district and where they're going and what those expenses are. Um, the number that's in the Board of Ed book uh, suggests that you could take this number up uh, from 270 and take it up by 100,000, putting it at 370 um, as a as a realistic expense. There's a it's a reimbursement, so it's one kind of floating one year behind. Uh, so there's an opportunity, and I'll add it to your motion for the third to increase that revenue line item by 100,000. Carl, under the revenue adjustments, what is this unfunded state circuit breaker? Mm -hmm. My eyes are failing me as I try to find it. Eyes are Give me a ballpark of where you're at. Where you're so on the bottom. bottom is an adjustment for 113000 Revenue adjustments at the bottom. Oh, revenue adjustments. Uh, so these are reductions that come off of the revenue for things that are not provided. Uh, there is no other mechanism. So it's, a, it's revenue spending, if you want to use federal terminology for it. Um, so these are all deducts based on adjustments to either a direct uh, loss of income from non-payment of taxes or uh, an abatement of an individual's uh, real estate. Uh, so the state provides a degree of tax relief uh, to seniors. Um, but they don't reimburse us for the nature of that program. So that, that would be the unfunded state circuit breaker. Uh, Liberty Place is a, a property tax abatement that was put in place for affordable housing development. Uh, vol volunteer fire tax exemption, uh, this is part of a recruitment and retention program that the town's had. Uh, this is the net impact of uh, providing a, an abatement for those volunteer firefighters who are eligible. So eligibility is a function of training, turnout, things of that nature. Um, so this is part of a, a recruitment and retention to preserve what you have as a volunteer uh, response corps. Tax relief uh, is a locally de determined tax relief break, uh, and the deferred tax revenue is um, it's a tax freeze. Uh, this would be somebody is eligible for the tax freeze program, their tax liability is frozen, a lien accrues against the property, and then when the real estate Changes hands, the lien is satisfied and paid in town. Where in the budget will be reflected the anticipated sale of the Morgan School? If you could tell me when we're going to close, I could tell you where we're going to put it. So I would expect that we would close within the next fiscal year. You don't anticipate that? The budget is not, is not accepting that as a revenue at this point in time because I don't know as of right this date what fiscal year it's going to hit, whether it's going to hit this fiscal year or next fiscal year. I'm assuming they will get through planning and zoning. The expectation is that that will happen next month. Uh, if that's true and it gets out, then the next milestone is to get to uh, closing on the property with the town because they can't really do any work until they actually own it. Um, so if it hits this fiscal year, it would just go into, uh, it would roll into the fund balance for the town. If it doesn't hit, then it hits after 7-1. You would have to either go through a process to appropriate it as a revenue and then spend it, or it would then flow through to that fund balance for the end of that particular year. Um, so it's just a matter of when, it, when it's actually going to be realized as revenue to the town. Uh, so just to give you an update, the running total of the cuts that I've recommended you take come in at 101757 The recommended increases in revenue is $120,000. Um, so that reduces the budget, reduces the overall revenues, reduces the mill rate. So the mill rate that would now be required is 31.71. Uh, which is a 0.46 mil increase or 1.47% off of the 1.9 at the budget as presented. So the average taxpayer has, a, unless there's further revisions, the average taxpayer's tax bill goes up by $96. Carl, could you repeat what you said? The mill rate is going to go up 0.46? 
So with these revisions in expenditure and revenue, the mill rate necessary to support that is a 31.71 uh, instead of the 31.75 that I gave you earlier. Uh, so that's an increase of 0.46 mills. What that is as a percentage instead of the 1.9 that was presented to you, it's a 1.47 uh, percent increase in the tax rate. And what that translates into for that average tax bill that was in the presentation is an increase of $96.60. So if there are other questions or things you want to know for the meeting on the third. All right. We're good. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you.